Uh, greetings. Uh, this is Graham Warren working with you on a digital twin for the little field simulation game. So uh, this little field game uh, deals with trying to really optimize the uh, performance um, and the, the infrastructure uh, and policies of a manufacturing facility that makes receivers. Uh, we have customer orders coming in here and uh, they're linked up with uh, kits. Um, there are 60 kits to an, uh, there's you know 60 receivers to an order. Um, and so when an order comes in, you have to have 60 kits available uh, and they're uh, purchased from a, you know, a perfectly reliable supplier who delivers you know, four days after the order. Um, so once these orders are linked up with their associated kits, they uh, go to this first queue and wait for boards, board stuffing. So what's happening there is um, there's a PC board and uh, it's populated with things like uh, chips, uh, you know, and smaller components, capacitors, resistors, diodes, and so forth. And uh, from there, it goes to testing, waits here in a queue, and uh, gets tested, then goes to tuning, again, waits for tuning. Um, after tuning, it comes back in for testing a second time and then leaves. So um, it's not sort of probabilistic routing here. It's just, um, it's deterministic. It, it goes to uh, testing twice and then it exits. So, um, you know, one of the things that you have to look at when you're developing a digital twin, uh, which, which we're gonna try and do is to figure out, you know, what you can actually extract, you know, which KPIs you can observe, uh, you know, for, for developing your twin. You're trying to mimic, um, the behavior of the system. And, uh, you know, that's gonna be possible to the extent that you're able to collect appropriate data to have your digital twin sort of line up with the uh, match match the performance of the the underlying real system. So this is, a, although this is a simulation, we're gonna treat this as the the world to be, um, to be mapped. Um, one other thing to note here is that uh, it's gonna be a little difficult to actually uh, develop a digital twin because the fact that these things come in here a second time, we don't really get performance indicators for uh, the first visit to the testing station and the second. We just get uh, sort of aggregate numbers. And so this utilization is the utilization of the, uh, the collection of machines at the testing station uh, for both visits. And uh, the queue uh, the length information that we get here is also uh, you know, it features the first and the second visit to the testing station. So that's a little unfortunate and unpacking that would be really hard. Um, so, you know, in, in real life, you'd presumably be able to tag these things and, you know, measure separately, but here we don't have the luxury of the separate data. So that limits, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the kind of models that we can conceivably develop in this context. Okay, so... Um, I want to just show uh, briefly what the available information is. So we've got for the arrivals, we've got the job arrivals. Um, this is just the number of jobs arriving each day. Uh, and we can get that in data form as well by just clicking here. And, you know, for the purposes of our uh, digital twin, I went and grabbed uh, the last uh, 21 days worth, 30 through 50. Um, so we're at the start of the, of the game. But you could use the digital twin as you go through the game and presumably grab 20 or more uh, data points uh, from each of these graphs and and uh, and then use the digital twin further along in the game. Um, so basically updating as you go, in other words. So you've got the number of jobs arrive, uh, arriving per day. You've also got you know how many jobs are queued. And the reason they would queue is, you know if you don't have uh, kits available to sort of pair them up with, uh, they can't enter the facility. So that's why you're getting these uh, these backups here. Okay, so that's that one. And then the kits, um, we get the inventory. You can see that we did stock out here. So that was what caused the, um, you know, the, the job arrivals to, to queue up um, because they were unable to find kits to sort of pair up with and hence they had to wait uh, during the stock out period here. So this is the, the inventory of the kits. Over time, you got a stock at here, 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 and here. And so then there you're going to get backups of the, the arriving jobs. Um, and then for this queue, you get queue size information. 
And um, this one has basically had a spike with return back to normal. And uh, you got utilization information here. So again, you know, for each of these, you can just get the data, right? Uh, you've got Q-length information on this one. Now this one is unstable, it's ramping up. So when we build our model, uh, we're gonna use queuing models to uh, to model, to try and create the digital twin. And queuing models are only appropriate in steady state. And this one really doesn't have a steady state. It's it's just ramping up. It's under, your, it's under capacity. Uh, excuse me, it's out of capacity. And, uh, and hence it's unable to prevent, you know, sort of a runaway train here with, with regard to the, the waiting times and the queue lengths. We can also get a utilization graph for this one. And it, as you might expect, it's running at 100%. So there's clearly a major problem at uh, station two or uh, the testing station. And then finally, um, we've got, well, not finally, we've got a queue length information for the uh, tuning station. And we've also got the utilization. Let's have a look at this one. So not as bad as two, but it's it's you know above seventy, above about eighty percent at the end here. And then finally, we can get um, the completed jobs information. So you can see how many jobs actually completed per day, uh, what the lead times are. Now this is a, a train wreck, right? You've got runaway uh, lead times. It's just it apparently just getting higher and higher. So there's clearly a capacity problem in this facility uh, as, you know, at the beginning of the game. And then the revenues are declining. We did make, uh, so we're running uh, contract one. There's three contracts in this game. Uh, the first is uh, contract one, which, uh, which I'm calling contract one. Uh, if you complete within seven days, uh, complete the order within seven days, you get $750. Of course, the net cash flow would be only be 150 because you have to pay 600 for the the kits that go into that order, um, and that declines linearly. So if you complete it 14 days or later, uh, you get zero, and there's a linear decline from seven to 14 days. For um, the second contract, you've got to get it done in a day, in which case you get a thousand bucks. The delta there, if you do get it done, would actually the the, the net cash flow would be 400 because of the 600 for the kits. Um, and uh, after three days, you're not gonna get anything. So you have a net loss of 600 on the kits. And then the most uh, aggressive of the three policies is this contract three, what I'm calling contract three, gotta get it done in half a day. Um, and you get nothing if it exceeds, if the execution time exceeds a day, but you get 1250 for that. Okay, so that in essence is, um, what we're able to leverage in our uh, digital twin. Um, that's the available information. And uh, you know you can only use in the digital twin what you're able to scrape, uh, grab off of sensors, you know, or perhaps um, manually input.